In this video, we're going to look at, um, we're going to start this video by looking at the two ways to make a buffer, and then we're going to continue the video into making uh, the first way of making a buffer. Then we'll have a subsequent video, a part two to this video, where we look at the other way of making a buffer, which um, we'll, we'll do mathematically in a separate video. So the first way, and the, one, the way that we're going to see in this video is, basically we just combine a weak acid and its conjugate base. So this is pretty simple, um, and typically this conjugate base is going to come as a salt, right? So what we would do is we would take acetic acid and we would add to it sodium acetate. And so this is our HA and this is our A minus, and we can figure out the pH uh, of that solution. We're creating a buffer because we're directly putting in HA and A minus into the same solution. Now another way of doing this would be to take a solution of uh, to take a solution of a weak acid, and we combine a weak acid solution with a strong base. And we we talked about this actually in the last in one of the, the previous videos where we looked at Le Chatelier's principle. So in this case, if we have a weak acid and we combine it with a strong base. We take HA plus OH minus. This is going to generate A minus plus H2O. And so what we're doing is, is we're, we're actually taking a little bit of HA and making the A minus directly in the solution by adding in the OH minus. So we're using Le Chatelier's principle to our advantage. And so we can set up the concentration of A minus um, by adding that strong base to pull some HA to being A minus. So we'll look at that example in the second part of this video. Okay, so we're going to take a look at lecture problem 11, which is making a buffer by combining a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base. So this is that first method that we talked about uh, at the beginning of the video. So let's take a look. So this one says, calculate the pH of a buffer prepared by combining 30 mils of a 0.15 molar uh, HC2H3O2 solution, that's acetic acid, and 70 mils of 0.2 molar sodium acetate the Ka for acetic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so we're going to set this one up and, and work it. And actually, we're going to work it in two different ways. So there's the preferred method that I'm going to show you. But then there's going to be another way that I'm going to show you. And the reason why I'm going to show it to you is because um, a lot of students kind of like to use ice tables with these things. And it may make more sense to you to use the ice table. So we're going to do uh, the first method, which I consider to be the most efficient uh, time-saving method, which is to use Henderson-Hasselbach. Um, and then there's going to be a second method where we actually do some equilibrium calculations and we use uh, an ice table. Uh, it's kind of up to you to decide, but I strongly recommend that you go the Henderson-Hasselbach route. Because what you're going to see is that Henderson-Hasselbach is going to come back when we do... Um, when we do titration curves. So um, I kind of strongly recommend method one, but I'm gonna show you method two just for your own, just for you to see and, and kind of make sure that you understand that this is all based on, on equilibrium. So for method one, we're gonna do uh, Henderson-Hasselbach. And from now on, when I talk about Henderson-Hasselbach, I'm just gonna call it H and H. Um, so I don't have to write it all the way out. So with Henderson-Hasselbach, we need the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. And you'll notice that I am going to eliminate the, um, I'm going to eliminate the concentration bars because uh, oftentimes in these things we can actually use moles and still be okay. And we'll, we'll kind of come to that in the next video. But this video I'm going to show you how you can actually do the full out concentration um, and, and that sort of thing. So. The first thing we have to do is we have to get a pKa. So uh, I'm going to just do that quick. Uh, I'm going to take the negative log of the 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, and uh, this is going to give me 4.77. So if you take negative log of the, the Ka, you get 4.77. So we're just going to add that in. pH is equal to 4.77 plus the log of A minus over HA. And so now the next thing we need to get is we need to get these concentrations of A minus and HA. And so you'll notice what this is, is this is a dilution problem. So what we basically have is we have 30 mils of the uh, 0.15 molar acetic acid solution, and we have 70 mils of a 0.2 molar sodium acetate solution. So um, if you want to draw this out kind of schematically, 
we take uh, 30 mils of a 0 0.15 molar solution and we take 70 mils of a 0.2 molar solution. We pop them in and our new volume is going to be 100 mils. So we have to work out those concentrations. So let's work out the concentration. Um, and what we're interested in is we're interested in the concentrations in that combined 100 mils. This is our buffer in here because we have our A minus and our HA. So this is our HA going in. This is our A minus going in. So if we take our 0 0.030 liters times 0 0.15 molar, that is going to equal 0 0.0045 moles um, of our HA. And we're going to divide by the new volume, which is 0 0.100 liters. And so this gives us and so this gives us 0 0.045 molar. And you know, if you want to use M1V1 is equal to M2V2, that's perfectly fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I just chose to do it this way for this particular case. But you could use M1V1 is equal to M2V2, and that will work fine. It would just be 30 times 0.15 is equal to X times 100. Um, and so we can do the other one, which is 0 0.070 liters times 0 0.20 molar moles per liter is equal to 0 0.014 moles divided by 0 0.100 liters. And so this gives us 0 0.14 molar. And so now we know, uh, now we know our concentrations uh, in the buffer. And if you look, the concentration of the A minus is greater than the concentration of the HA. And so we're going to expect that our pH should be greater than pKa. We have a little bit more base than we have acid. So that's a good self-check to make sure that you got everything right. But let's plug it in and see. So if we take pH is equal to 4.77 plus the log of the uh, 0.14 molar divided by the 0.045 molar, this is going to equal a pH of 5.26. And so that is a good self-check, right? Uh, we add, we have a little bit extra A minus, a little bit more base hanging around. We expect our pH to be higher than the 4.77. That's our fundamental. And we get 5.26. And you can see that that's still pretty close to 4.77. So it's in our pH range for the buffer. But um, it is a little bit higher because we have a little bit more A minus. Okay, so now let's look at this and approach it from a slightly different perspective. So let's look at this as an ice table. So our reaction in this case is we have our acetic acid. So here's our reaction if we were to treat this as an equilibrium. And in the previous problem, we calculated the concentration. So I'm not going to redo that because we already did it. But our concentrations here at initial are equal to 0 0.045 molar and uh, 0.14 molar. That's what we're starting with in our solution. So when we, start with our, when we start our ice table, our ice table is going to have initial concentrations for both the acetic acid and the acetate, which is what a buffer is. That makes sense that a buffer, that we get that for a buffer. And so if we start this uh, as this type of problem, what we're going to do is, is we're going to write our Ka equation. So Ka is going to equal the concentration of the C2H3O2 minus times the concentration of H3O plus divided by the concentration of HC2H3O2. So that's always what we do when we do this. And then um, we have our ice table. And for our ice table, our initial entries are going to be 0 0.045 molar 0 0.14 molar and 0 molar. We have no H3O plus to start. This hasn't um, equilibrated yet. So we're going to do minus x, plus x, and plus x. 0 0.14 molar plus x and x. And so we can bring our equilibrium line over to our Ka, where we have 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 0 0.14 molar plus x. Uh, x, and we have 0 0.045 molar minus x down below. So we can do our self-checks and see if we can do the approximation. Uh, it's going to turn out that we can. So uh, the smallest one here is 0 0.045. 
If we divide that by 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, that is going to check out and it's going to be greater than 100. So we can get rid of our, oops, that was a very big eraser. Um, so we can get rid of our x, uh, our plus and minus x's down on the top and on the bottom. And so this simplifies down to what we had with the other Le Chatelier principle. We have 0 0.14 molar divided by 0 0.045 molar is equal to 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So if you solve for x uh, and you calculate that out, you're going to get a number. You're going to get a value of 5.4 times 10 to the minus 6, for the, which is equal to the H3O plus concentration. And if you take the negative log of that, you're going to get a pH equal to 5.26. And so you get the same answer. Now, arguably, you can see that there's a lot more steps in this than just using Henderson-Hasselbach. What Henderson-Hasselbach basically is, is it is this equation right here, just in that convenient form where we have it as pKa and the ratio of these two numbers in a log format, and then that gives us directly pH. So you can see that both Henderson-Hasselbach and this method are completely equivalent. It's just that the Henderson-Hasselbach takes into consideration the approximation automatically. So you're welcome to do it either way, but I sort of recommend the Henderson-Hasselbach approach.